Hi, this is Dr. Raj's Mailbox, where I, Dr. Raj, will get letters from people who have complaints, concerns, and today we're going to talk about Anita. Anita sent me a letter, and it says, Hello, I hope you can help me. I have just lost my job because of my disability. I was not able to perform my job that my company wanted. They did not understand my disability. I have idiopathic hypersomnia. When we talk about diseases that make you sleepy, a very misunderstood disease is idiopathic hypersomnia. It often gets confused with narcolepsy and it's very debilitating. It is something that should be addressed and there are treatments to help you make you feel better. Patient was diagnosed around two years ago and had multiple sleep studies. It affected her school, it affected her work, she was falling asleep when she needed to stay awake and the doctor prescribed a medication called New Vigil. And what is New Vigil? It's what we call an awareness promoter. And this is a medication that is somewhat like a stimulant. It's not as potent as Ritalin or Adderall or Dexedrine, but you need to know the side effects of this medication. It can cause you to have headaches. It can cause you to have some GI upset. You may lose some weight and it may affect your blood pressure and heart rate. So before you take a medication like this, please understand all the side effects. Patient was also taking caffeine and it wasn't helping. She mentions that she carried a diagnosis of sleep apnea. Now the plot thickens. When people have sleep apnea, you definitely can't present with hypersomnolence, excessive daytime sleepiness. She mentions that they recommended a BiPAP machine. What is that? We commonly hear the word CPAP, but a BiPAP tells me that there's two pressures and it helps blow off unwanted gases such as carbon dioxide. Unfortunately, she did not tolerate it and was getting worse. Before we address the idiopathic hypersomnia further, we need to address this sleep apnea. I need to know how severe it is and there are many, many treatments now beyond just CPAP and BiPAP to help you out. And even if we do use BiPAP, there are different ways we can make it feel comfortable and help you tolerate those pressures. After we treat that sleep apnea appropriately, we could address that idiopathic hypersomnia again. Well, patient is still having trouble and at this point she's taking caffeine almost every day. It's causing her to have problems with her daily activities and she has mentioned that another doctor thought it was narcolepsy, but they didn't call it narcolepsy because she didn't have all the symptoms. And I wanted to say this is that narcolepsy, idiopathic hypersomnia usually has quite a delay until they get the right diagnosis because people aren't aware of both disorders. People may have narcolepsy because everyone always assumes they're going to have the classic presentation of narcolepsy which is the fainting they call cataplexy, some of the sleep paralysis, but you know what? Some of these symptoms can be very very subtle and if you don't ask the right question you won't get the right diagnosis. So is there a possibility that Anita you have narcolepsy without cataplexy? it's very quite possible. And the only way to address this is to get that sleep study again, address the sleep apnea, and maybe we'll think about calling it idiopathic or narcolepsy once again, taking that test that you had called that sleep latency test, that napping study that we need to do in the morning. Thank you for writing. What I would do is repeat the test, get that sleep study, do that napping test in the morning, review the results with your physician, and be treated appropriately. And if you still have problems or any concerns, I'll be happy to see you in wonderful California. I'm Dr. Raj, wishing you all the best, Anita.